Indian launching of the uh, Meghalaya Collective uh, co-branding and also signing of the MOU. Uh, here we are in this uh, knowledge session that we, uh, that we are having here uh, on the topic Meghalaya Collectives, uh, building, brand, building brands, building capacities. Uh, here, friends, we are uh, very fortunate and I take this uh, privilege to welcome each one of you. I'm so glad that to see that, uh, you know, the hall is full. Uh, young entrepreneurs are here, the buyers are here, and uh, some of the, uh, from the very big players and companies are here. And we have with us the panelists who are from the renowned uh, brands, renowned uh, uh, companies, and also with the uh, senior most uh, uh, officials from the uh, government of Meghalaya. Uh, without uh, further ado, we'll start it since uh, we make an apology as well of uh, starting a little late since the, uh, you know, the other session got over just now. Uh, we'll try to catch up uh, and f uh, finish in uh, the required time that has been allotted. Uh, though, I mean, like, uh, you know, we'll uh, hopefully within uh, one hour or uh, more than that, we'll be able to dwell on the topic that has been uh, given unto us. So as we start, we'd we'll like to, uh, you know, we'd we'll like to welcome our uh, panelists. And as I uh, read out the name of the panelists and I'll uh, read out their profile too, I would request them and I'll request uh, Dipin uh, to accompany them to, so that they'll be uh, taking their seat uh, here. Among the prominent pa panelists that we are having today, especially as a chief guest for this uh, uh, panel discussion, we have Sir R.M. Mishra, the executive uh, chairman, Meghalaya Investment uh, Promotion Board, Government of Meghalaya. Sir, we will uh, welcome you to the uh, dais. Uh, please accompany him. Uh, Sir Mishra is a retired IAS officer from the 1987 Assam Meghalaya cadet with over three decades of experience in various key roles across the Indian government. He works, spans multiple sectors, including women and child development, home affairs, agriculture, water resources, MSME development, and commerce and industry. He has made a significant contribution to the development of policy supporting small and medium enterprises, particularly women led businesses during his tenure as the development commissioner of MSME, Mr. Mishra holds, uh, Mr. Mishra holds a master degree in geography from Allahabad University and further academic training from uh, Syracuse and Harvard University. Sir, we are very privileged to have you this afternoon here. And uh, uh, yeah, and I'll request uh, the assistant director to kindly facilitate, sir, with the stool and, uh, and give boxes. Next, we are privileged to have amid us uh, Sir Nitin Puri. Yeah, he is the founder. Uh, sir, please come. Uh, Nitin Puri is the founder of Kisan Se, a platform that seeks to a platform that seeks to promote the products of farmer collectives across the country. At Kisansi, the mission is to revolutionize the food industry in India. They offer a range of select and premium packaged food products that are grown uh, minimally, minimally processed and packed at source. All the products are co-curated and co-branded in a partnership with the best farmer enterprises located in the heartland of rural India. With Kisansi, 
customers are assured to get access to authentic products uh, with the promise of place of origin. And you also uh, get an opportunity to support rural enterprises and spread uh, across the length and breadth of India. Mr. Nitin has more than 20 year plus years of experience in the food and agri business segment, working with retail giants such as ITC Limited, Reliance, and Aditya Birla Group. His vast experience is deeply uh, relevant for Meghalaya Collectives in providing the right input to build the market-driven food brands. Sir, we are very fortunate to have you amidst us, and I would request the Assistant Director of Food Processing to kindly facilitate Sir Nitin Putin. From another the brand, we are fortunate to have with us Ms. Bhubika Malhotra. Madam, can we? Yeah. Ms. Bhubika Malhotra, she is the not head of Septo company. Septo is an India fastest growing e grocery headquartered in Mumbai. Septo is present across 10 major cities in the country. Septo delivers more than 5,000 products, including fresh fruit and vegetables, daily cooking essential, dairy, health and hygiene products, etc., to Indian homes with, within 10 minutes. Beyond grocery, Septo has also introduced a cafe offering that allowed customers to order coffee, chai, and other cafe items along with other grocery. And Ms. Malhotra, she has an experience of more than 12 years in this uh, industry as a, a leading uh, seasoned supply chain uh, professional. Madam, we are very uh, glad to have you in the midst of the panelists. Uh, I request the assistant director to kindly facilitate Madam. In our midst, our very own entrepreneurs who has come to participate in this World Food India and has a stall here in the Meghalaya Pavilion, I would like to welcome Ms. Mebari Nongrum. Yeah, Ms. Mebari Nongrum, the founder of Sovereign Rinsan Creation Private Limited. Now, Ms. Bari Nongrum is the founder of Sovereign, one of the leading co brands of Meghalaya based at Ribhoi district of Meghalaya. Her passion to create tasty and natural products from locally available products in a way that benefit farmers have led her to entrepreneurship journey. From the heart of the Meghalaya Ribhoi district, Sovereign brings a range of dehydrated fruits, jam, pickle, spices and honey, all grafted using eco-friendly solar dehydration te technology. By preserving freshness ex and extending shelf life, the brand ensures the true flavors of nature while supporting sustainable livelihood of farmers and communities. Every jar and pack of sovereign embodies their dedication to quality, innovation, and sustainability these the difference from the table that the sovereign uh, has to offer. I'd like to uh, call again the assistant director to kindly facilitate Ms. Bimari, uh, Mibari Nauru.
we are glad to have all these panelists. You have heard that I have just read out all their uh, profiles and in their segment, in the area that are, they are specialized in. And as we have this uh, knowledge session to discuss and make Halia Collectives, the brand that has been launched today, a co-branding platform, whereby all these small and small-scale entrepreneurs that they can come together and bring in this platform so that they will be able to, uh, to connect it to the outside world for their uh, better marketing. Um, a little bit, most probably all the panelists might have been to Meghalaya, must have been visiting the beautiful state of Meghalaya. And for the benefit of the house, and some of you might have not visited Meghalaya, some among the buyers who are interested to buy these products, who are interested to uh, you know, strike deals with our entrepreneurs who has come here in Delhi. In Meghalaya, though it is a very small state that is located in the northeast of India, hardly of 22,000 square kilometers in its uh, geographical area. However, it has its, uh, the products that it, uh, that it gives, especially in the food processing sectors, the products that are being processed from, uh, you know, from fruits and vegetables to spices to be beverages. We have uh, plenty of other products and among them, the niche one that we are promoting are the spices, among the spices, lacodon turmeric, which has a very high curcumin content. And among the, uh, among the uh, citrus, the cassie mandarin, which has a GI tag, together with the uh, uh, lacodon turmeric also, it has a GI tag. Uh, and then light form, then the ginger. These are the products. And honey is one of the best that you can get from Meghalaya. So few of the products has a very niche, uh, you know, segment in the, in the market. So as we gather here, mostly to discuss, mostly to see the strategy of how we can build these brands, build the capacity so that those uh, community-based organization can be, uh, can, we can take them forward so that they'll be able to uh, establish a link, especially in the market uh, with the uh, uh, sustainable market uh, with the outside world. So without for further uh, you know, explaining about uh, the state of Meghalaya, uh, we'll hear from, as we start the discussion, we'll like to hear from uh, our own uh, entrepreneur who has come here. Uh, uh, we'll like to listen her story in terms of challenges that she has in terms of, you know, uh, maybe the challenges in the uh, production system, maybe the challenges in the marketing, in marketing link linkages. So we'd like to hear from here. And from there on, we would uh, request the panelists to, you know, to give us an option, to give us a strategy on what we will be able to take forward so that we'll be able to help the small, uh, uh, the small entrepreneurs and the community-based uh, organization or uh, uh, groups. So with this, I would uh, request uh, Kong Nongrum, the founder of uh, Sovereign, to uh, kindly uh, uh, give the, uh, the challenges or the, uh, uh, the various uh, challenges that you face, and uh, you can tell your story, and from there on, the other panelists will be uh, taking it up forward. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the introduction. Uh, as uh, uh, we've heard, uh, I'm here to share the challenges uh, we're facing as uh, entrepreneurs. On, uh, with regards to uh, my story, we started uh, five years back and we've uh, passed through various stages from home-based enterprise to uh, a stage where we need to upscale. And we've participated in many exhibitions and we have uh, the confidence in our product, but uh, there came a time when there was a problem of uh, the production capacity. So for that, we realized that we need to invest in machineries so that we can uh, increase our production capacity. And uh, with uh, our effort and the support of the government and other uh, agencies, we've been able to uh, procure the machineries that is required to uh, 
you know, to upscale and to improve the production capacity of uh, our manufacturing unit. So we have reached a stage where we can produce, we have the quantity, but now uh, the problem, the main problem we're facing is with regards to market. Uh, ultimately, it all comes down to market because uh, uh, even if we have the uh, production capacity, we have the stock, if uh, the market access is limited or we don't, or we have to spend too much of our time in uh, trying uh, to market the produced by ourselves. So uh, it affects the other, uh, uh, you know, the production part. It affects our, the quality assurance. So uh, as we are beginning our partnership with uh, Meghalaya Collectives, I'm hoping that uh, they will guide us, they will lead us uh, in this, uh, uh, they will help us to, uh, you know, to uh, fight this challenge. And uh, yeah, that is uh, what I would like to. Thank you, Kong uh, Nongrum. Uh, I think the other panelists also have heard about the challenges that she, uh, she mentioned, and especially the uh, marketing uh, as to connect with other uh, business players. Uh, I'd like now to request uh, Sir Nitin Puri, the uh, founder of uh, Kisansi, to kindly t take up the stage. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, Nebari ji has made a very uh, practical point that uh, for her and for her enterprise and for her uh, company, perhaps it makes more sense to devote more time, more energy uh, on the supply chain. Because uh, if you go into too many things, if you're doing supply chain, procurement, processing, marketing, sales, distribution, you may not have enough bandwidth and that will somewhere compromise on the kind of product that you are eventually uh, making and you know manufacturing and processing etc so that is exactly where kisan se comes in kisan se is a brand kisan se as a word you know kisan se means from the farmer as the word itself implies so kisan se is a brand which works with farmer groups across india where we have co-branded products with farmer collectives across india so uh, co-branding means you will find the umbrella brand Kisanse on the front of every pack. You will also find the logo and the brand of the respective farmer group. So in case, for example, it's Nibari Ji's farmer group, Nibari Ji's farmer group's logo will also be there. So it is as much uh, the FPC or farmer group's brand or product as much it is of Kisanse. And then we follow a co-profit model. So co-brand, co-profit. Co-profit means whatever is the direct cost of making a product. So if you are making a product, you will have raw material cost, packing cost, labor cost, transport cost, etc, etc. That is factored. Then whatever we are going to be doing as a marketing partner, we will have a cost of distribution, sale, marketing. So there is that cost which is attached. And whatever price we are selling in the market, all these products, whether we are selling through supermarket or through Amazon or through Zip2 or any online offline channel, whatever is the revenue, less the total cost of the supply chain of the farmer group and the Kisanse marketing cost, whatever is the gross margin, that is distributed on a 50-50 basis between farmer group and Kisanse. So it is like a cooperative. Some of you or many of you may have heard about Amul. Amul uh, is the company which started the cooperative revolution in India in dairy sector. So it's a similar concept where there is a team of marketing people, professional people working with farmer collectives all, all over India. And we are establishing a system where farmer groups are able to access uh, retail markets without having a marketing, without having a salesperson, without having to worry about where to sell, how to sell, right? So it is like a business partnership. And so that farmer producer collectives SAGs, farmer groups, cooperatives, they are able to do a good job. We also handhold on aspects related to 
product standardization, process standardization, quality, labeling, packaging, etc. So that when that product comes out, it should be a good quality standard product. And if that product is tomorrow going to be sitting on a supermarket shelf in Mumbai or Delhi or any big city, that product should sit with confidence. It should be as good, if not better than a product coming from a large multinational company. So that is how a farmer's product should look like. So we also handhold in this entire aspect of uh, food safety, packaging, quality, etc. Thirdly, we work very closely also with various uh, government agencies because there are a lot of schemes including through SFAC, Ministry of Food Processing, NABAD, State Rural Livelihood Missions, uh, where a lot of infrastructure has already been created in rural areas all over India. But many a times the farmer groups, FPCs, cooperatives, SAGs don't know exactly how to operate them, what kind of product to make, what kind of packaging to do, what kind of labeling norms to follow, what kind of product will actually sell in the market, intelligence and knowledge about that. So that capability we bring and we work closely with various government agencies so that the infrastructure created under various schemes is also monetized. The capability and the hard work of the farmers is also leveraged and we are able to take a product to the market which is also the best from a consumer point of view. So it is good, better products for consumers and good and better livelihoods for farmers. So that is broadly the uh, business model through which Kisan Se works on co-brand and co-profit. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Correct. Private label procurement as in? Means a big super store or somebody. Supermarket wanting to build their own brand. I mean, they, the, I mean, they will sell it on their own brand. Got so, it. Yeah. So we are we are even open to co-branding with the private label of that particular supermarket. It is possible, why not? It is, it is possible because we have the ability to do the marketing, product standardization, product research, uh, quality control, farmer producer company, farmer collective has the ability to do things on ground and the retail chain has the ability to distribute. And how so, to get to the consumer? Because consumers, the marketing happens in mind. Correct. And he has three banks in front of him. That we will have to think because it's a question you just asked. We have not worked on this model, but we can discuss on this uh, offline. It is a possibility. In fact, today morning we were discussing with a very big retail company exactly on these lines. They had visited our uh, stall and they were saying that can we also do a, uh, a branding along with you, along with the farmer collective because that retail company will not have bandwidth or uh, people or uh, ability to be able to manage the supply chain, do the marketing activity, do the promotion activity like we will do together. So that is also one possibility where we can you know, work together and explore. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. This is exactly what we are looking for when uh, we want our uh, entrepreneurs, especially from the Meghalaya collectives that they come for the uh, co-branding, and as you spell out co-branding, co-profit, and importantly, as uh, we listen, that uh, you helped in utilization of the infrastructure that has been created through various schemes. And this is exactly what, even in the state of Meghalaya, we have found that many of the infrastructures which uh, the government has created may not be utilized to the optimum possible. So with your, with the, with, you know, with the, the uh, linkages with your company, we hope that it will be uh, fruitful of using those infrastructures that has been created. Uh, yeah, we do encourage also the audience, uh, if you have any questions, or else if you want to wait till all the panelists, are, uh, they have uh, shared their uh, uh, opinions and recommendations, uh, you can always uh, ask an, a question. So next we would uh, like to uh, listen to from Ms. Bhumika Malhotra, the not head of uh, Septo Company. Hello, <clears throat> hello everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, Sir has already spoken about Zepto, like what Zepto stands for, what we do. 
I would focus a little more on what is our plan, what we are trying to do here. So just to give you a brief, quick brief, currently we are serving close to 10 million customers already on Zepto platform. These are the customers who are buying from us both FNV, non-FNV, fruits and vegetable, non-fruits and vegetable. Uh, sir said 10 cities. We are actually already live in 16 cities and we are planning to go in 25 cities by the end of this year. We currently have close to 450 stores across the country. We have almost around 20 warehouses is what we call. And we also have around 60 collection centers, which are basically these collection centers that we are trying to go closer to the source, uh, probably as close as where uh, the material is harvested. For example, if we ha have banana coming from Timburni or we have onion coming from Nasik, we have our collection centers right located at the heart of these production uh, villages or uh, places where we have the farmer produce coming directly from. And uh, what is important is that right now, the way we see Zepto uh, it has been proving as a very good platform for fruits and vegetables, overall fresh produce. Currently, right now, we are actually already serving close to 3 to 4 lakh orders every day, uh, whereas fruits and vegetable is concerned. But now, this is about how we can help, like, you know, ma'am spoke about how to reach the end customer, how to do marketing. Now, this is about how Zepto can help um, for, uh, you know, the uh, suppliers or farmers or probably government organizations or cooperatives to reach directly to the customer and to market their product. Uh, but the most important part is uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to go deeper and uh, we are trying to do more research uh, as far as the source and building our back-end supply chains is concerned. And this is what I would like to share from my personal experience also. Like I have uh, been working in supply chain industry for close to 12 years now. But what I see is that there is a lot of demand. Anybody who feels that, you know, I produce something or, you know, I, I probably do some organic material, organic vegetables, or I do some, say, exotic vegetables, who will buy? Or today we were just talking like, you know, dehydrated fruits, who will buy? So at least coming from the uh, demand side platform, I can tell you uh, anything. Uh, you, you just need to know where to sell, who to sell. In India, it just sells. So dem uh, demand is not a problem. The problem is that how do we supply so that we supply the freshest material? We get it in the least amount of time. Uh, and obviously, it should make sense uh, financially for both the producer, the grower, the company who's selling. We also need to make, of course, there's money to be made there. And how do we very justly uh, uh, kind of reward our farmers or go closer to the source so that at no point of time in any way, uh, uh, you know, they are kind of deprived of their share. So I'll just tell you how Zepto is doing that. Uh, at least I have traveled uh, um, deeply in uh, Maharashtra belt, uh, Maharashtra growing belt and northern growing belt and Bangalore as well. So how we are doing it is first is that we are trying to onboard farmers directly on a platform. We have something called, we are trying to build our own product called Bloom, wherein we don't have any middle men. We directly take the details from a farmer. We have an app. We take, it's a very easy sign up process, which requires one basic ID proof and obviously their bank details for transaction. And we directly onboard farmers. We already have close to 5,000 farmers. We're planning to have 10,000 by the end of the year. This is a slow process because obviously there are a lot of guarantees and there's a lot of fear among farmers also to work directly. They want to go, uh, they, there is an apprehension that what if our material is not sold and then there are so many aggregators in the middle who try to take away the share. So what we are trying to do first is making sure that the payments for farmers are easier. That is number one. Secondly, what we are trying to say is that we will not just get involved in buying, we will get involved in growing. We are doing something like farmer growing program, 
wherein we will get involved in like okay you need help in probably what kind of uh, uh, material that you need for growing what kind of material you need for harvesting you need some agricultural expert help you need what kind of seeds anything like we are trying to provide those kind of help to the farmers directly that is number one and uh, secondly we are like i said ki we are trying to eliminate the middlemen and take the material directly and trying to give them confidence of 100% buying now how does how do we work the 100% buying only if they are producing the quality that we need because quality first is one of the philosophies we believe on zepto and because we are getting involved right from the produce right from the growing cycle we are able to ensure quality and then we are giving them full confidence that we'll buy 100% irrespective of demand that is what because that's the confidence that we need to give them otherwise why are the middlemen able to take away the entire share is because obviously they have multiple networks and farmer is afraid to go directly with us and they end up selling it to vendors on a lesser cost lesser price and they lose out on what they could have made in the bargain so those are few things that we are trying to do and definitely would love to associate with as many uh, uh, direct growing brands who are closer uh, to their source who are doing it directly from farmers procuring from them and uh, would be happy to connect definitely with anyone who would like to work together with this thank you thank you madam uh, definitely as you have at target of uh, 10,000 farmers, we do see that we will have more cooperation, uh, you know, association with, with the Meghalaya collectives. And in Meghalaya collectives, there are more than the targets that you set. The, the moment that we have that association, your targets is reached that it will shoot more than that, actually. Yeah. And then as you have heard that from her, she will, uh, they look at the food safety and at the food uh, uh, quality maintaining of standard of supply to their uh, supply chain. And, uh, and it's very interesting to, see, uh, to hear that, I mean, like, you know, uh, the produce that, or the products that you uh, procure, you want to deliver or to reach the end customer at a very short time. And as we know that most of uh, the farmers and the uh, FPOs that deals with the perishable goods, we are looking forward to such a supply chain where by the moment that they harvest, in no time it will be reaching the end customer. Uh, so with this, we, we have heard from these uh, uh, panelists the various uh, recommendations, the various suggestions that they are giving. And amidst us, Sir Mishra, he is the, ex, uh, he is the executive chairman of the Meghalaya State Investment Promotion Board. Uh, and as I have read his profile, that he has uh, been in the various sectors in the government of uh, uh, India, as well as the, he has been in various, uh, I mean, like, you know, in various sectors in the state of Meghalaya, who has traveled the length and breadth of Meghalaya. He knows the in and out of it. He would uh, love to hear, we love to uh, listen from Sir regarding the, uh, uh, what other panelists has shared and what the entrepreneur ha has shared. Sir, please, sir. your time. Thank you, Marshada. So first of all, my gratitude to all of you who have come here to this conference. It's end of the day and you still have mustard courage to stay on. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, also gratitude to the panelists who are also entrepreneurs. They are not just giving gyan, they are committing themselves. So uh, panelists who are also entrepreneurs, it's a very delightful experience hearing them. Uh, you notice in the beginning of the session, shut up. He apologized on behalf of the previous session organizers. So that is Meghalaya. We are so polite and uh, nice people. So that's a quality we must have noticed. Generally people, uh, they don't apologize even for their own misconduct. He has apologized for pre previous session people actually. So that is what we are. Now you must have got some flavor from what uh, or Kong was speaking. Kong means sister. She was speaking and she has flagged two very crucial uh, points. 
One is, she is saying that the capacity to produce more. Now, you all know that capacity to produce more is one thing, but producing is another thing, because you produce to sell, not produce for its, its own sake. And therefore, uh, what I've heard from uh, both the panelists, Nitinji and Bhumikaji, is again very delightful. Uh, there's so much appetite, uh, which we, we have noted uh, with uh, a lot of pleasure, that there's so much appetite in entrepreneurs who are now uh, in the pioneering fringe, uh, the front end of the market uh, process. Uh, the traditional markets have their own way of uh, working. And Madam has uh, called some of those elements as alligators in, in the middle, no? So their, uh, their way of working is known to us. Now this is freedom from uh, those elements because you're going directly to the, to the uh, market. Uh, you're, uh, the model which Mr. Puri is very interesting. He says uh, it's not uh, selling for a, a price or buying for a price, it's profit sharing. It's a new thing. Generally people have, uh, traders have just bought it for whatever they, uh, they wanted to buy it for because it's a perishable product. You have no holding capacity. So uh, many times uh, you take your things uh, there and then you are stuck. So you have to sell it for... Uh, so this is indeed very, very nice to hear. Now just few things uh, I would like to just for whatever they have said. Uh, one is this hand-holding thing which has been flagged is very important. And uh, when you are hand-holding, there is something called heart-holding. Building that trust is important and especially when you go to our place, uh, somebody would die for you a little hereafter because up front they may be, uh, because of past experience and so forth, so forth, there may be a little hesitation but the next day that same person may be willing to die for you because the trust has come in. And therefore what I would say is, uh, you must have uh, read or must be aware of this, when the British came uh, to India, they were ruling the place. Nobody used to drink tea. Nobody used to take tea. And now the whole nation is drinking only tea. In fact, in the rural areas, when I go to the village and all that, you give them anything, any kind of sweet or milk or anything, but you don't ask for tea, they say, chai ke liye to pucha hi nahi. Kuch bhi khila do, uska wo, wo, wo nahi mante. Now, how it has happened? Promotional pricing. Promotional pricing is important. So, for, to my friends, I would like what I would suggest is that little bit of promotional pricing in the sense that some investment which is not for profit upfront, <coughs> of, uh, in building that partnership, building that relationship. And once it warms up, I think it can only, as Kong has said, uh, there's so much of capacity in us, like we have a huge landscape. And you must have heard that we are a global hotspot of biodiversity. Miguel, it's a global hotspot of biodiversity. So, not only we can make available to you what we're producing already, there's so many things which uh, we can make available to you, which are, could be new things actually. Like we started growing the strawberries, not in too much distant past. We're doing quite well. And similarly, many more things because our uh, agroclimatic zones are from the cold to to the warm. The, the entire gradient is there. So. What I suggest is, I will not repeat what you've already said. Uh, it's very meaningful. And uh, as Bashadab has said, uh, we look forward to uh, actively engaging with uh, you and more friends if you have uh, in this area. And uh, uh, like what you said is, it's not only buying from that space. It's the partnership if it is uh, uh, in the scheme of things. That partnership where we are willing to share the pain, the pleasure, the delight, profit, loss, everything. Generally, uh, in the agriculture space, because I am, also, I am a farmer also, so I have seen that the people who are trading at the front end, they are willing to take only pleasure and pass on all the pain to the farmer. So, if it, the, the, the program is to share everything, uh, I think it will be a very endurable kind of relationship. Now, this is where uh, a uh, couple of more things of the nitty-gritty. Like say we have orange which is world famous, Kasi Mandarin. But there may be issues with in, in, in terms of say genetic uh, structure now. The question is can we improve the gene pool? 
with the same species, we can be improve the gene pool so that the quality goes up and also maybe production also goes up, productivity goes up. Question. So you talked about research, Bhumikaji. So this is a research point. Like say, over generations, the, the genetic structure might have tapered off. Can we rejuvenate it? And uh, the, what is the cost benefit? How do we do this? So what kind of research? And this is where uh, also leveraging the, the huge government network of institutions. Many times, the wonderful scientists there, but they are doing something in isolation. It is not linked to business. So can we tie up onto them? Uh, they work. The, can we suggest some projects which the, say ICR in Badapani in the Meghalaya can take up for Khasi and Garos both? And then the interest is of not only research per se and academic interest per se, the interest is commercial. Interest is for the well-being of the farmer. So uh, suppose we generate 10, 15, 20 ideas like this, roll them out over a period of time. So the knowledge economy, once it improves, uh, then there's so many things will start improving off their own. And uh, then the second thing will be of uh, the social entrepreneurship development. So like say when we uh, talk about cooperatives or FPOs or so first of all we catch hold of those 20, 30 people and create the group. But in, just like in an atom, what is that nucleus? So the, the leadership development program uh, is a crucial element in this kind of, especially uh, what both of you are doing. So if we invest something in the leadership, like say six months to eight months, identify some 100 people in the state, take them to the best of the places where people have already thrived, they have done well. And like say Kong is, is the ready-made raw material. If she is uh, taken to places where people in similarly placed position have already excelled, mm -hmm. they have been able to multiply their production and also broad base their products, and they have done well, so she will come back with a little more cheer and then more, more confidence. So uh, this uh, leadership development program, I think, uh, all of you are already leaders, so a little bit of thing if it gets rubbed off in that landscape, I think it will go a long way in terms of creating those uh, dots for you to connect with. So that's an important thing, the private sector development, as we call it. So that, uh, that is one more uh, thing. Third point we both, uh, all three of you already touched and Bashadab also mentioned. There's so much of social infrastructure which already happened, but the capacity utilization is many times suboptimal. And uh, can we map it? And can we put you to better use with a PPP kind of arrangement? where you also have equal access to those infrastructures up front. And uh, we can build more because the, around farmers, there's so many government schemes. So uh, many time creating documents for getting help under a scheme itself is a challenge. So if you can invest a little bit, put somebody who is smart. Uh, we have wonderful people. In fact, the Meghalaya government, you'll be delighted once you discover it more. It, uh, our officers work like those corporate people, actually. It's not that uh, typical bureaucracy which you encounter in the rest of India. So our people are more corporatized, I would say, that the cultural shift is there. So if you interact any of them, who are, many of them are present here, they would f speak the language of corporate. Actually. It's not about just creating a file and keeping it there. Now, that is, uh, it will be less taxing for you to engage with us, actually, in that sense. And uh, linked issue is of technology. Uh, like uh, for you to deal with the customers at the front end at the say cosmopolitan spaces or metropolitan cities, mm -hmm. the quality cannot be compromised. Mm -hmm. Now insurance of quality mm -hmm. also presupposes availability of technology. And uh, many time it is uh, the, the level playing field is not there. So if we can usher it in, if much of technology is available with CSIR, ICR, but access many time is a challenge. So that could be kept in mind. Uh, one more important thing I suggest has to be kept in mind is the financial services delivery. And when you talk about financial services delivery, it's not about loan alone. Loan, insurance services, credit guarantee services, counter guarantee services, and so forth. So this, if we can also collaborate with financial services delivery institutions, let's say microfinance uh, institutions or uh, there's so much that Nabart can do, so much, uh, so but at your level, if you uh, kind of uh, group it, uh, communitize it, 
I also have a dialogue with the Mart, they'll have more greater confidence because uh, their confidence will go up the moment you declare that you are a partner. In fact, when I uh, spent some time working in State Bank of India before I joined the IS, and the people who were teaching me, they said, uh, do you know how to read the balance sheet? I said, no, a little bit, you taught me. They said, there is, uh, beyond numbers, there is something very important. I said, what is that? They said, goodwill of the customer. It's far more important than numbers which are written in the balance sheet. Now, therefore, the goodwill of our people will be pushed up. The moment you declare that you are a partner, because your uh, past experience, your credibility, your capacity to handle finances, your capacity to keep your word, all that is important for a banker. So this also will be uh, important. When we're dealing with uh, our own uh, future, a uh, lot is happening in the state. Several externally aided projects we've implemented. And we have a very fine delivery kind of system with very, very bright kind of professionals. Uh, with both government and also we have uh, advisory people. Uh, so, moving on, I think the important point also is uh, to build up that coal chain, which is uh, important. Also, some bit of reasonable cross subsidization upfront for that promotional uh, uh, work to happen. And the government, in fact, just had a brief chat with the commissioner in the morning, also with the chief minister some time back. We have appetite to uh, chip in with whatever is needed to make it happen. And our uh, Honorable Chief Minister is, uh, has a very, very great vision, in fact, some uh, about the GDP and uh, about farmers and everything. So uh, there will be, there'll be willingness on our part to engage with the partners who are looking at a slightly medium to long term uh, kind of relationship. And uh, we are committed to that and committed to excellence, committed to efficiency, committed to high level of productivity and mutual benefit because somewhere we are, we work like a clan. So if you join us, then uh, uh, you won't regret. I can only tell you this. Join, but uh, as I said, you come with the mind and especially heart, a slightly longer term uh, engagement. Uh, that will be, I think, more productive and uh, there'll be better uh, return on that. Uh, this uh, packaging uh, and design of the products, then uh, the moment you come, then I think all those things you already know how to do it. So uh, there's not much is needed. Once you become a pro partner in the process, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry too much. You'll uh, not only make it happen, but also inculcate that in the cultural ethos of the place. We already have very, uh, very sanitized people, actually. If you, you, you travel to Shillong, you must have traveled. What about you? You must come. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you travel to those dhabas now on the on the highway, our kongs they do such a such a great job in fact cleaning those utensils. If you eat chana or whatever there, some nice chapati, sabzi, etc., it is just sparkling. So cleanliness, hygiene, this is inbuilt in society. But the kind of proof the people want now. This uh, nano kind of testing and all that. All that technology is a little alien to us, but we'll pick up very fast. So, um, uh, I think this is a very wonderful uh, conversation. One can go on and on, but I think uh, it, we will just leave it to doing more than just talking. And uh, these people don't need any gyan from me because they already know they are in business. So, and uh, many more entrepreneurs in this room they already know what uh, they have to do. Uh, from our side, uh, I think we have to not only uh, say that we are committed, but maybe to demonstrate as we move along with a very firm kind of detailed action plan and just uh, invite them over. You have heard us, but you come and see what we are. Uh, so therefore, I extend the invitation to both of you, particularly and others who are uh, present in the room. I shut up, I commit on his behalf that he'll Take care when you come to us. Come uh, around second week of November, we have Cherry Blossom Festival. That is very, very famous and that is best in the Northeast. So maybe you can plan a trip to Shillong around that time. Cherry Blossom, it is uh, actually time to blossom. So thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, look forward to a lot more uh, delightful experience coming out of this uh, 
they get together then just uh, you know having a workshop it's not a workshop it is more than that i i i feel it that way so thank you bashad for taking the risk of calling me here mm -hmm. thank you thank you so much sir for that uh, wonderful beautiful insight that you have uh, spelled out and i do believe that uh, some of the uh, concern from the other panelists might been have been addressed and as uh, as uh, rightly said and all those uh, you know uh, he has talked right from the capacity building <clears throat> hand holding and heart holding the promotion pricing the social entrepreneurship the financial services or financial sensibility uh, we could uh, really uh, enlighten uh, by this uh, sharing sir and as you have heard many of the things from the uh, panelists and from sir as well we would encourage if you have any uh, question so that the uh, panelists here they'll be able to they'll, uh, they'll answer you and even among the panelists also maybe whatever has sir has uh, said you may still have some more question to be asked and then even i uh, do uh, uh, encourage kong uh, mebari also if you still have something to uh, share or something to ask uh, from among the panelists uh, we'll give this time for you all anyone yes you can ask uh, uh, my question would be to there will be two questions bhumika ji you referred zepto has been ex, i mean zepto has extended tangibility towards farmer producers should i take it to be like zepto is into contract farming or not number one and mishra ji uh, i think in the brand that we're talking about meghalaya collectives uh, i had a thought two things one meghalaya has gi products gi tech products in the food space now are we considering those categories to be incorporated in this the collective brand that we're talking about because they are mostly micro entities not even sme as such and in shillong i have found and that was one of the unique instances i have seen over there a khasi market it's a complex now i went over there and i asked for uh, bamboo shoot pickles and fish pickle they prepared it within half an hour to 45 minutes and they packed it and uh, sold it to me now they are micro entities now can they be brought under this collective branding and then the market would be bigger for them not just the shillong market these two segments are you uh, what's your view on that thank you thank you so much for this question so no uh, zepto is not into contract farming because again like sir said uh, and i mean of course uh, this is what in my experience i've seen so it's not about that there is an agreement and then we want to sell what they are getting and then it's all about you know that we get what we want and leave it rest on them no that's not the intention that's actually not what we are looking for because uh, we are also in the business for the long term and we are we understand that that building deeper relationships and starting it from the time of planning what to grow why to grow like say for example i was recently in uh, nasik and there was this village uh, far off where i saw a lot of thai vegetables were growing like you know a lot of uh, i would say uh, like some capsicum red yellow and different uh, material which probably nobody even eats in that village and all of that is exported red cabbage those kind of things which nobody probably in the village consumes and it's all for uh, like of course for zepto as well we are selling it on our platform so no we are not doing it like okay this is what we want you to grow and it's a contract no uh, we are helping them with our uh, knowledge base whatever we have gathered from the team of experts but at the same time we are learning from them uh, that what helps them how do they uh, kind of you know uh, ensure that uh, they are getting the best out of their land they are getting the best out of their resources as well so we are trying to collaborate and see how we build long term supply in which both benefit 
and where is contract farming is concerned yes the aggregators who right now are very active in this space they definitely do that contract farming with the farmers and we are procuring right now with those aggregators as well because like i said still our farmer network is not so big we are still building it uh, but directly we are not trying to get into that kind of uh, contract or any kind of just commercial contract with the farmers we are trying to just say that okay you have a produce every morning this is your price you open the price we will buy and at best possible price and best possible quality so there won't be any exclusivity binding for the producer though you are supporting them with yes yes there's no binding on them they can go and sell to others also but what we have realized that obviously if we are giving them a daily cycle and daily demand we have hardly seen that kind of churn that they will go somewhere else and also uh, with time what we have seen that the price also kind of become it becomes a perfect competition we don't see that that okay some vendor is going and paying higher price or someone is trying to buy at a lesser price uh, more or less you'll see a perfect combination uh, competition after a time and for farmer i feel what i have seen in my experience it's more about the guaranteed buying you know that every time they know they'll come and we'll buy and that is what also matters a lot so we uh, they are also interested in long term association with us i have not seen in my experience a lot of churn even without those binding agreements thank you for this very important question and uh, this is linked to what you asked mr puri also earlier <coughs> in some way so for our this megalay collective you can say in simple terms like a top up so it doesn't kill the value or possibility of the brand per se that remains but just to bring incremental value proposition to this particular brand as so that remains we don't kill it I mean, we don't subsume that brand and create another brand it's not like that so uh, the the vision is that this should bring a little more comfort no no so they for them to because brand promotion is very costly exercise so when we promote say tr say lakhanong turmeric so that also we promote simultaneously na right, under the collective so it's a mutually beneficial proposition and their wherewithal to promote it on their own will be very thin because it costs a lot there is media campaign and then going uh, reaching out to people and all that so this is as a public well being effort as a social enterprise of the government we are making investments in this mega like collective because then we drag everything along for a higher level of value proposition and you can bring third also like say if you bring mr puri's kisan se also in this this is so because each one of them is bringing some added comfort to the value and therefore it is uh, it is beneficial to that extent if there is an alligator uh, brand coming what she was mentioning then there is a risk but this government uh, brands are not they are not of that nature and type they are very very uh, benign and very caring actually i would say so there is no such risk and gis we have we have already got gis for several of our products and we are in the pipeline of having many more and uh, as i said megale is a is a global art spot of possibilities actually so many more gis possibilities are there they will also should thrive actually as we you know and they should be able to sell in the e markets actually so after some time not in a mall so that is what we are looking at as a future thank you for asking this Hello. Um, hello. Good afternoon. Um, really nice presentation because I think this is the best one till now. Oh, wherever I have gone, I think very nice presentation. And I have a small question for um, Bhumika ji. That how do you plan on training the farmer? Like, uh, what is your plan? Are you going to partner with some organization? Because at ground level in all the states, probably you won't yeah. uh, reaching out to. each and every farmer won't be feasible so how do you plan what sure so thank you for the question so firstly uh, okay so right now like i said in the beginning we already have these 50 to 60 collection centers so when i say collection centers obviously these are places where we already have the group of farmers who are working with us and we already have that kind of uh, i would say uh, numbers in terms of numbers we already have so the training part is that as what the plan is that we are hiring the experts on our payroll these are going to be our agricultural experts who will be flexible like say for example today 
like if i have to grow strawberry in Mah mahabaleshwar and then tomorrow probably i need expertise for someone in banana in uh, maharashtra so this person who knows and understands uh, the whole science behind it the technology behind it will be flexible and we are hiring these people on our payroll who will be working with these collection centers and the farmer cohort which is associated with these collection centers so that is how what we are planning right now will you be open to uh, collaborate with ngos who are working on training um, farmers in sure definitely uh, we would be because uh, the challenge that we also face is that however we try directly to reach the farmer we somehow see somewhere you know the connect we lack that connect and if uh, ngos already have that connect and in ngos are very actively working with farmers they can build the trust for us and they also come with expertise they come with the expertise of what is the right way to do things the technology uh, technological expertise and understanding then why not definitely thank you ma'am thank you hello ma'am my question is for um, miss bhumika like i have uh, have tried multiple time mailing a uh, quick commerce like zipto uh, blinkit and instamart i have tried multiple time like to be onboarding on your quick commerce but okay. can you let me uh, let me know let us know all what's sure. the parameters included so yeah. that we can be on so what's your brand about like what are you exactly we are into spices business plus okay. uh, some snacks with it okay and you do it out of meghalay that's where your base yeah, location yeah we do, we do delivers like all over india okay but i have tried like no great then you have the right person here you can tell me like exactly. your contact i'll definitely so there's no criteria as such uh, so it's very simple uh, we will uh, first register you and we'll try and uh, put some samples firstly there will be sampling and if those samples are passed bases are quality experts uh, overall outlook and then after that we'll put some of your material on the platform and once we start see the start seeing the sales picking up we will say probably start with say 20 stores 30 stores two cities five cities whatever is your capability to supply and then once it does well we can scale it up so onboarding why probably it has been difficult for you because obviously uh, there are multiple partners and sometimes it's a supply and demand thing that's it nothing personal there so you oh. can let me know <laughs> and there's another thing ma'am that is it necessary that we should have a, a warehouse or something in Uh, no no cities. you don't need to have the warehouse but it is very necessary that if we start seeing the demand and you are not able to supply us the quantities that we want then we'll then it's difficult to continue because uh, for us the customer experience matters the most and availability is very important part of experience the customer should get it whenever they want it so if you are not able to give a consistent demand then it's difficult to have the product and for that you need to have a deeper back end which probably you would need a warehouse for Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I have a question for Miss Bhumika. Uh, I wanted to ask if you are also associating with the farmer producer organizations. Like you said, you've been associated with five thousand farmers, yeah. but you must be knowing that uh, under the different schemes of government, like the ten thousand scheme, so many farmer producer organizations are. getting formed throughout the country and as everyone knows marketing is a challenge for even those organizations uh, so like sir said that they are uh, or you know associating with fpo so do you uh, are also doing that or is it in your plan you know we are doing that in fact last month i just came from an inauguration of a like an fpo has set a collection center for us in fact it was such a i would say a grand fpo that they had invested everything on their own and uh, we have started uh, a very big facility in maharashtra near nasik again uh, so that is totally via an fpo okay. so we are very very proactively uh, because that's how because i think fpo is a like they already have the groups they have uh, the farmers farmer collectives uh, yeah uh, so that e that makes it easy for us also so we are already doing that uh, pan india pan india pan india okay. yeah thank you Yeah, 
very good evening. Uh, this question is to both uh, Nitin sir and to Bhumika madam. Uh, I mean, do you uh, only have an inbuilt system for quality check or do you, rel you rely on third party, I mean, certification? So we have our own system and our best quality system is our products are co-branded. So if there is some problem with the product quality, uh, not just legally, financially, uh, you know, there is an implication, there is also a social obligation and a social pressure on the pharma group not to do, do anything wrong, at least by design. By default, sometimes there may be a mistake, a lot may be rejected. But because of our uh, co-branding structure, it becomes very much amenable to, you know, good work happening at the pharma producer end. And obviously, there is a lot of hand-holding uh, training that we also do with the uh, pharma groups whenever we start uh, our uh, business partnership. So yes, for us, we do our own quality benchmarking. We don't have any external party doing it for us. But then how do we make sure that the wastage for farmer is minimum in the process is that although for cities we have our big facilities in the big cities or outskirts of big cities, but for say, in, say for example, we want to procure material from Shillong or place there. So what we'll do is we'll have a small facility within your facility maybe or maybe nearby your facility where whoever wants to come and work with us, they will supply. And right on the spot, we will have one person who comes in with our all quality understanding, who will tell them this is not the right quality, this material we can't accept. And firstly, they'll train, they'll make the person who's trying to supply to us understand that what is the right quality for us. And when we start working, it is not that, that you will supply the lot to Delhi and after that I'm rejecting because then you're already incurring the transport cost, right? We will tell you at that point itself. We will create smaller warehouses right at your point of produce so that the entire, you know, wastage and all of that supply chain cost reduces. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation. It's quite uh, engaging. Uh, right in the beginning, we were thinking that, you know, after long exhaustive uh, activities through the day, uh, we do a, we did afraid that you know less participation, less of engaging. But uh, we really appreciate of your uh, uh, engaging in the session, and I do believe that you know all the questions that you have in mind, uh, you have already asked and has been uh, explained, has been communicated uh, accordingly. So as we uh, end the session, I would uh, uh, you know on behalf of the uh, government of Meghalaya through the Directorate of Food Processing. I take this uh, uh, privilege to express my uh, th thankfulness, especially to Sir Mishraji, who has, uh, you know, always kind enough to accept our invitation and to be with us. And uh, through him, that we have uh, gained a lot of uh, insight on all the activities that uh, are going on in Meghalaya. And I'd like to appreciate also uh, Sir Nitinji, uh, and also for uh, Bhumika ji, for giving uh, us your, your time, you know, your, your entrepreneur, your, both of you are entrepreneurs, the founder, the CEOs of your big companies, but you uh, make it uh, a point to meet the small group of entrepreneurs and um, uh, entrepreneurs from Meghalaya, and it's very, uh, uh, encouraging to see that you know you are um, ready to associate with us in a long term and also I'd like to appreciate the Kong uh, Mibari the entrepreneur from Meghalaya for sharing the um, uh, challenges and what she's looking uh, forward and I do hope that as the panelists has shared she got an insight to those discussion and I'd like to thank also all the uh, participants, all the attendees, and all the invitees who have uh, come and joined us in this uh, session, and all the uh, government officials uh, from Meghalaya. Uh, and 
Also, I'd like to thank all the media team who are covering this uh, session. We do hope through this session, uh, you'll be able to uh, you know, uh, take it uh, up to the right uh, concerned uh, parties. So, uh, as we uh, wind up uh, the session, as we wind up the session, uh, in fact, from the uh, Invest India, from the organizer, Mokpi, they are um, uh, giving a, uh, a bag of uh, gift for the uh, panelists. I would request the uh, uh, chairs, the technical associate, to just, or maybe from the, yeah, chairs to hand over the uh, bag from uh, Mokpi for all the panelists who are on the dais. So, Yeah, so once again, thank you very much. And the uh, panel's uh, discussion is over. Uh, yeah, we'll have a group photo here.